So let's say for instance, you made a bunch of changes to your models, you made a bunch of migrations, and now you're getting errors nonstop. Like you can't actually change these errors. This is why it's so important to test locally before you bring it to a live server. That is before you bring it online in a real place, right? This is actually how I should have designed the, your, the model itself from the get go. I shouldn't have ever added short code later. Now, of course I did that so you guys could see what's going on, but realistically, you're gonna wanna think through this model as much as possible. So if I did run into some errors, then I would want to do some things in the migrations to actually make some changes. But that's long form and it's gonna take a, lo it's gonna take a lot to actually get there. So I'm gonna show you what you would do if you ran into big errors. Now let's actually think through all of the models that we want. I want to have a timestamp in here for sure. So I'll do models.datetime field. This is another field that has the potential for automatically creating the value. So if I did auto now equals to true, that means it's every time the model is saved, it's gonna set that time value. There's another one that we could do and that's auto add, auto now add, so when model was created. So that's a true timestamp here. This is actually more of like when it was last updated, right? So that's the field of updated. That's, but those are the differences in there. Now, if you put false for both of those, so this will be just, I'll just say empty date time or empty date time. We'll do models dot date time field and that we would just do auto now add equals to false and auto now equals to false as well. So auto now and auto now add false. That's an empty date time. That means that actual date right there we can set on our own in the, whether it's in the admin or somewhere else, we can actually set this one. These two, we cannot set, they set automatically. Okay, so those are the things that I'll definitely wanna have. There might be other sort of things that I want, like analytics, like clicks, the number of clicks this has been clicked on, uh, but I'm actually not gonna put that inside of this model. All this model is gonna do is have our original URL and then our short code. We'll have other stuff, but that's pretty much it. And then the last time it was updated, that is if we made any changes to it. And then of course, when it was added into the database for our timestamp. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'm gonna run my migrations. So make migrations and notice it says it's add the field timestamp. We're gonna have to do all of this stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quit this and I'm gonna do something that if you run into those errors, what do you do? Well, this is what I do, especially when I'm testing. When you're going live and you're going building a real production and you're doing stuff like that, what I'm about to tell you is not necessarily gonna work for that, but it does work when you're testing and this is really important is because we're testing, we can do this. I'm coming into the shortener and I'm gonna go ahead and delete the initial file. I'm gonna delete the second migration and the third migration. I can also delete other things in here or I could even delete this entire folder if I wanted. Uh, but now that I've got rid of all of those migration files, I can go in and actually delete the database file as well. So I went, I went ahead and deleted that database file. And now I'm back in the terminal. I'm gonna do Python manage.py make migrations. And notice it did make migrations for shortener. So if we go back into that migrations folder, it's showing us now the initial this is now showing us all of the fields. It's a little different than what we did before, but it's now showing us all the fields. And now we can do python manage.py migrate. And this does all the migrations. And notice it's showing everything else too, right? Because we completely de deleted our database. So that also means that we're gonna wanna make a new super user, python manage.py create super user. And we're gonna do CFE and hello at teamcfe.com. And then I'm gonna do learn code 2016, learn code 2016, and we've got our password. Okay, cool. So now we're back to kind of square one with the database. If I actually refresh in here, or not refresh, but just go back to that, I'm gonna have to log back in because I actually, ch I actually changed um, the session. I deleted all the sessions. I deleted everything related to Django, so I have to, go back in and log in again. And notice it's saying page not found for that particular URL. 
That's because we haven't created any yet, at least in this new database that's now empty. If I go to add a new URL, notice it's showing URL and shortcode. So I can make CFE blog again, and we'll just see CFE blog is the shortcode as well. We'll save and continue. And now I have that new URL in there and I've got this new item. A lot of things are looking good here. So that's great. That is it as far as what happens when you need to make drastic changes to your models and you run into errors with migrations. Um, if you have any questions on this, let us know. Of course, this is not gonna work again. It's not gonna work on production. It's really good for local live testing. And if you delete those migrations a thousand times, that's okay. This is really just a history of the changes you've made to the models. So if you deleted that history and deleted the database that thinks that history exists, that's okay. Now, the other side of it is if all of your migrations were up to date, that is, I actually did create all of these things, you totally could run that again, and then all you would do, so for example, if I did keep those other migrations and then I deleted everything, I could just do Python, manage.py, migrate, and I could say the app name, which is in our case, shortener, and then you can do dash dash fake. So that is a fake migration. So that what that means is if I didn't delete all of those files and I did the migration and I did all the migrations, right? So if I'm up to date on migrations and then I deleted the files, that is the database knows that this exists in the backend, but these migration files are different, then I can run this fake. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, definitely try it out on your own. Try it, play around with these migrations as much as you can so you get a better understanding of it. It's really hard to give you an example of everything um, because there's a lot of things that can happen. But the main thing here is I've now shown you how you can make changes to models and I can show you worst case scenario what happens if your migrations get all out of whack. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.